Hey, in my last video, we discussed educational budgets on a national and a local level. Today, we'll be discussing one aspect of our educational budgets, and that is textbooks. And uh, we'll be discussing whether or not they're helping or hurting our students. I'm gonna help you find the answers in today's video. The way in which we are budgeting the education of the next generation is it's very important to me and it ought to be very important to you. Let's not forget the fact that all of our tax dollars are going to funding this education budget and that's not likely to change. However, we can change the way in which that budget is spent. One of the many components of our educational budget is school supplies and one very interesting school supply is the textbook. Now I did previously say textbooks, don't get me started on the textbook, but nevertheless, you got me started on them. Now what I'll be discussing in today's video isn't really even news. The plight of textbooks has been discussed and debated over and over and over. You can find tons of videos and books and articles about how ineffective and expensive they are. Even with all of this information and circulation, I'm still seeing teachers saying and doing things like this. It was never just about giving teachers a raise. It's really about the fact that I only have 29 textbooks for a group of kids of 87, and I wish I was exaggerating. This video came out of all the media coverage of the teacher protests that occurred last spring, and while I recognize that this teacher is just a concerned teacher, cares about her students, it does concern me that she's really, really bothered by these old dingy textbooks and wanting this new uh, education budget that they're fighting for to be spent on new, ineffective textbooks. For the record, I don't know which textbook or textbook company is being referred to in that video. It could be one of the exemptions to the rule, but as far as I've been able to see, the rule is textbooks are ineffective. As of the 2013 to 2014 school year, that's the most recent information I have available, 80% of the educational budget was spent on salaries and retirement. And only 8% of that budget was spent on school supplies. And 8% might seem kind of small to you, but that's actually 8% of the entire budget is actually $50 billion. According to Applied Educational Systems, the cost of textbooks has risen 812% in 35 years. College students are spending $1,168 on average a year on textbooks. And while the number is a lot smaller, it does seem high to me, and I know it certainly adds up, but it's $250 per student on average for public school districts. And so the question is, is that money, $250 per student for textbooks, is it going to good use? Well, let's get the obvious out of the way. Textbooks are very boring. You could throw as many fancy graphics and images in there as you want. At the end of the day, someone would choose adult or child to binge Netflix over picking up a textbook and reading that. Now, for a child, textbooks are both boring, but they're also intimidating and very confusing. In my teaching experience, I've seen students get more information out of staring at a blank wall than opening up their textbook and trying to read that. One irritating and far too common aspect of textbooks is a reading level that is far above an intended grade's ability. I just typed out a passage from this science textbook onto my computer, and I looked up the flesh Kincaid reading grade level scale, and it showed me that this passage for seventh graders was actually having a reading ability level of that of a sophomore in high school. Why should the textbook of a class of seventh graders have a reading level that of three grades higher than it? I am not sure, but this strategy can obviously be one of the reasons that there is so much confusion and intimidation when it comes to students reading their textbooks. And the scary thing is this, is I just found this textbook online because it was cheap and, and available. There are tons and tons of textbooks like this. This is not a rarity. This is the norm for textbooks. To be written on such a level that is higher, sometimes two, sometimes three grade levels higher than its intended grade. I plan on doing a separate video at a later date, diving deeper into this textbook and others, and I'll be sure to show you how you can look up your textbook's reading difficulty. The Washington Post published an article about textbooks, and they borrowed the words of a couple experts on this topic. The first one is Beverly Jobrak, or maybe Jobrak, sorry Beverly. 
She is an educator and author of Tyranny of the Textbook, and she worked in the textbook industry for years. She claims that textbooks aren't inherently bad, but they are given very little chance to be effective. She is quoted saying, publishers are incentivized to create materials that appeal to teachers who don't want to change. So curriculum materials that could have a significant impact on education reform are less profitable. So for some reason, publishers are under the assumption that teachers want the type of textbook that just happens to be ineffective for learning. Perhaps they're just wanting the type of textbook that they're used to, the same kind of format that they've been using for a long time. They may like it for the graphics or the images that are sprinkled in there, and many will just opt for a textbook because it's the cheapest option. In an article from The Atlantic, history textbooks are given a scathing review. The entire article is fascinating. If you ever want to check out that article or any other article I post, links are always down below. This article states that history textbooks are written in a one-dimensional, no opinion, no thesis kind of way. And this is completely contrary to historical writing, one that absolutely requires opinion, argumentation, and interpretation of the facts for it to be effective writing. It's really no wonder that students are extremely bored by their history textbooks. Also, history textbooks have been used as a crutch for teachers who do not know their history. They'll often over rely on the textbook to get the content into the head of the student when they're unfamiliar with it. Now, here's a bit of brain food for you if you're someone like this. If you don't know your history or don't know certain parts of history very well, you can use a textbook for that. That's what I did uh, when I was teaching history. I taught history for several years. And while I would never, almost never, allow my students to use textbooks in class, unless maybe I wanted them to look at a map or something like that, I often would have them look at the textbooks for that reason. Um, but I would never let them use textbooks in class. I didn't feel like it was right. I didn't feel like it was a useful resource. But for me personally, someone new to teaching and new to some parts of the history curriculum, it was very, very helpful to use as a resource and a guide for my instruction. I would be reading it during my planning, uh, but my students would be doing project-based learning or uh, reading primary source documents. But the textbook would be a guide for me because I didn't know everything about everything that I was teaching at the time. So I do admit that teaching history is incredibly difficult. Having context and knowledge of everything that ever happened, it's, it's impossible for any one person to have it all. So using a textbook can be helpful in that regard. Another thing that is mentioned in this article from The Atlantic is the fact that some teachers are over relying on their textbooks because they just don't care to actually teach. You know, how easy is it to just show up to class tell the students to read a couple pages out of their textbook, assign them a couple questions, and boom, that was class. You know, I speak from experience. I did have a teacher once that did this where it really unfortunately, I would show up to class and I'd be excited about learning about history and the teacher would just have us read the textbook, answer questions, write them down on a piece of paper. And it's, it's just unfortunate that that situation existed for the author of this article and for me personally and maybe for some of you. For that teacher, I would say you just need to take a little more serious the pedagogy. Take more serious the fact that your students need to be learning. Don't use a textbook instead of actually teach. And I don't say that coming from a place of being a perfect teacher. There are plenty of days at the end of the day I think, boy, that was some bad teaching. <laughs> I have some work to do. I'm not a perfect teacher at all. I just don't believe that someone using the textbook for every single day of instruction is really doing justice to the students or to the school system. So I think about these people that are using the textbooks in this way, I think if the textbooks weren't there, then they wouldn't have that resource to be able to not teach. Um, but I also think about whoever's overseeing these teachers you know, it's, it's their responsibility to make sure they're actually doing their job. So there's more to it than just textbooks. Take the learning of the students serious. And that brings me back to what we were talking about before. According to Joe Brack, the textbook industry is simply not doing that. But really, who can blame them? They're businesses trying to make money. They're just responding to what the education system is throwing at them. There is one thing that our education system tried to do. They tried to pass a bunch of new standards. That is the Common Core Standards. And the idea there was that the new curriculum and the new standards would 
perhaps be able to elevate the status of our textbooks into usefulness. But were they able to? This is what Joe Brack says. In some cases, chapters or sections are rewritten or reworked to reflect a standard or group of standards. For the most part, however, a paragraph here, an activity there, a few practice exercises and some assessment items are all that are required to be rewritten or reworked. So according to her analysis, the new standards had very, very little effect on the textbooks. Next we have Mike Schmoker, a former administrator, teacher trainer, and author who believes that in order for our students to succeed in college, they need to be equipped with the skills it takes to read textbooks now. I agree with Schmoker that we need to have preparedness for the next step. That's very important for our students. However, I'm not really motivated to make my students read textbooks now in middle and high school just because someone else down the road is going to make them read textbooks later, probably someone that's going to be using them in an equally ineffective way, probably textbooks that are also very ineffective for actual student learning. I especially do not want to make my students read a bad textbook now in middle or high school because they're gonna to go to college and they're gonna think that all textbooks are garbage because of the garbage ones they had to read back in the middle and high school. Schmoker does make a good point of bringing up the fact that a bunch of districts made the huge mistake of tossing out their textbooks and then adopting all of these, to use his word, horrific teaching methods such as lectures, movies, and posters to try and fill the void that was left behind when the textbooks were thrown away. So these school districts had the gumption to heed the warning signs and get rid of their textbooks but they didn't follow through and provide the correct teaching uh, the effective teaching practices afterwards the school system should be focused on purchasing books and supplies and pursuing teaching methods that are proven to be effective and in a later video, I wanna show you some of the teaching methods that I find to be the most effective, the ones that I love to use the most. If Pearson or McGraw-Hill or any of those textbook companies came to me and said, Nicholas, we wanna make a textbook that utilizes all those awesome teaching strategies that you showed us, I would be down with that. To recap, textbooks are way, way too expensive. The textbook companies are not incentivized by the school system to make textbooks that are effective. And the bottom line is that we have got to be striving for teaching methods and strategies that are effective, proven to be useful, and proven to make learning actually happen. That's the way we need to teach our students, and that's the way we need to go in the direction of our education budget. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. Remember, all that I do is in an effort to provide a better future for our students. And that better future begins with you joining this conversation. So if you like what I'm doing, if you like my channel, I'd love for you to subscribe. I'd love for you to leave a comment. I'd love to engage in a conversation with you right now. We could talk about textbooks. We could talk about that teacher of yours that used yours the correct way. I'd love to hear about that. All of this is an effort to better serve our students, to give them the education that they deserve and that they need. If you're wanting some more content, there'll be links to other videos at the end of this video. I've also started a new series called Brain Food in which I'm expounding upon some of the things, some of the life advice that I can provide for you um, and really just a conversation starter, kind of like story time for us uh, in which I talk about things that I've learned as an educator um, and it's a fun series, you need to check it out. Also, I had a fascinating conversation with Adam Hudson. It's on the podcast. If, if you don't know how to get there, go to Spreaker spreaker.com or go to the Apple Podcast app and you can find the lateral podcast there and Adam and I we discuss is our nation really really committed to education is our nation really uh, about education right now trying to make it better trying to make it better for our students so we talk about that a little bit you can listen to that there we got more podcasts that come out every Monday at noon so be sure to check that out too hey follow me on Twitter at lateral underscore media you can also find me on Instagram we have a website it's lateral online.com thanks so much for watching it's been real